the righteous increase, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people groan. Are you a person who is in a leadership role and have authority over others? How wise do you use your authority or do you misuse it? Well, stay with us and listen to the following. During the Lord's temptation on the mountain, the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. The Lord Jesus Christ could have transformed the stones into bread. He is capable of raising children for Abraham from stones, and he is the one who said to the Jews when he entered Jerusalem to, in answer to their protest against the children, praise. If these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. The Lord Jesus Christ had already put before himself an important principle that is not to use his divinity for the comfort of his body. He could have used his divine power to stop himself from experiencing hunger, thirst, getting tired or feeling pain. If he did that, his incarnation would have been formal. Therefore, the Lord refused to use his divinity for his bodily comfort. He used his divinity for the comfort of people as in the miracle of feeding the multitude from the five loaves. The Lord's decision also indicates another determination that is not to use authority generally, except when necessary. The Jews attacked him in various ways, insulted him, humiliated him, and called him gluttonous and the wine-bibber, that by Beelzebub he casts demons, that he is a Samaritan, possessed by a demon, that he profanes the Sabbath, breaks the law, blasphemer and deceptive. He used to hear and remain silent. He never used his authority to punish them. On the contrary, when his two disciples insisted on punishment, he refused and considered it a repetition of the temptation on the mountain or another effort by the devil to make him use his authority for himself. It happened one of the Samaritan cities refused to accept him. His two disciples said to him, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? The Lord replied in reproach, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of. The Lord preferred to always avoid using his authority. Many are those who blaspheme against him now in our days, and many are those who deny his existence. Many are also are those who defy his orders, accuse and mock. God leaves all these without punishing and without destroying. All those who provoke for a fire to come down from heaven and consume these and those, the Lord will answer by the same phrase, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of. So use your authority in similar manner and do not misuse it. Stay with us and let's look at the following story. Four Traits of Effective Leaders A young officer in the army discovered that he had no change when he tried to buy a soft drink from a vending machine. He flagged down a passing private and asked him, do you have change for a dollar? The private said cheerfully, I think so. Let me take a look. The officer drew himself up stiffly and said, Soldier, that is no way to address a superior. Well, start all over again. Do you have change for a dollar? The private came to attention, saluted smartly and said, No, sir. Each of us commands some authority. There are all or will be those we guide, supervise, rear, mentor or lead. Some of us will be effective and others will feel as if we're running a cemetery. We've got a lot of people under us and nobody's listening. Much has been written and taught about leadership, but I find that at least four traits are common in all people of authority 
who effectively elicit cooperation and respect from those who look up to them. Whether you are a parent, whether you find yourself in the workplace sitting on a volunteer committee or teaching someone a new skill, these traits will help you effectively guide those who would seek to follow. These good leaders are listeners, they take time to listen to suggestions and concerns of those they endeavor to lead. Encouragers, they don't try to do it all themselves, neither do they motivate by force or guilt. They encourage others and help bring out their best. Assertive, they say what needs to be said without being unkind. They tell the truth as they see it, openly and frankly. And fourthly, decisive. They know what needs to be done and they make timely, even difficult decisions when necessary. But they can also take charge without running over the people in their lives. In short, good leaders lead. It's said that the trouble with being a leader today is that you can't be sure whether people are following you or chasing you. But those who will develop these four traits are sure to find that their authority will be valued and respected. So let us pray together. My Lord Jesus Christ, our Almighty God, who has given unto me my father and mother, and made them to be an image of thine authority and love, and tender watchfulness, and has commanded me to love and honor and obey them in all things. Give me grace cheerfully and with my whole heart to keep this thy law. Help me to love them fervently, to honor them truly, to yield a ready obedience to their commands, to comply with their wishes, to study their happiness in everything, and to bear their rebukes with patience and humility. Deliver me, O God, from pride, rebellion, and willfulness, from passion and from stubbornness, from sloth and carelessness. Make me diligent in all my duties and studies, and patient in all my trials, that so living I may deserve to be thy child, who art our Father in heaven.